Right now is the perfect time to be jumping into Star Citizen. Whether you're a veteran player or brand new, never signed up and ready to start playing, it is the perfect time because we have the Luminala event going on. And right now we also have a ship on the EPTU that I have been waiting for for years. The Santok Yai. We're going to be hopping in this ship today, checking it out, and hopefully it lives up to the expectation. I have been waiting for this ship for a very, very long time. It is gorgeous. The green on it, the way it glistens, the way it sounds, absolutely everything about it so far is amazing, but hopefully it lives up in the live version of the game. But before we get into testing out this ship, hopping in and destroying a bunch of bad guys out there, we got to get to the spawn of this video and that is gonna begin right now you guys yes you you're all the sponsor of the video as always because all the views the likes the comments the subscriptions all that stuff go a very long way to a content creator like myself that relies on all that stuff so remember next time you're watching one of my videos and you enjoy what you see make sure you drop a like drop a sub all that good stuff to support the channel and not miss out on any of the future episodes also make sure you head over to the link in the description to check out the celebrations that are going on currently for luminala in star citizen there's a lot of events a lot of contests daily rewards and all kinds of things that you can get into as a new player or as a veteran to star citizen but also a lot of the packs are reduced price right now for luminala also for those of you that use my referral code while signing up for star citizen as soon as you make your first purchase you'll get this bonus pack with armor weapons skins for a vehicle and all kinds of goodies and including in-game cash so as you're signing up, don't forget my referral code. Thank you guys so much for the continued support, but let's get into this ship. The first time I jumped into this ship, I was pleasantly surprised by how similar but different it was to the car 2 all. It had the same type of control scheme to it and coloration for the MFDs, but it was slightly different in a way. It just felt a little bit better and cleaner in a way. It did seem like it had pretty good power to the thrusters going upwards, but I'm right now going to check out just the visuals on this ship. I love the way it shimmers and that unique greenish gold that it has on it, but lifting up the landing gear, it just it, it transformed into something amazing. And it's kind of like the uh, the Cartuol, but it has a different type of profile to it, as you can tell. It looks nice. It feels nice. We got those uh, the ball thrusters spinning in different directions that help you control the ship and I just love the way they move and the way they feel whenever they move. Upon taking off and launching for the first time, I was surprised by how much thrust this thing actually give, and I, but I couldn't really uh, fully appreciate it until I got into the cockpit. It was actually giving some g-force, and I find that out quite a bit later. I was just trying to admire the way this ship looks right now and in all of the graphics of this game. I am so excited to see this ship on the PU, but for now, we got to test it out and really be a critic of what this ship can do for now. Upon activating the quantum warp for the very first time, I was surprised to see that they made the decision to keep the exact same warp as two of the other ships. First of all, it started off on the car 2 all, then it moved over to the Sulin, and now it's over to the uh, Santok Yai. So I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that decision. It needs to be a little bit different because the aliens are supposed to have different warps. It still has a different warp than the rest of them. So I guess that's something, but come on, give us some more designs. We want to see some more. As for the weaponry on this ship, they are unique to the Santok Yai. They are called the Yang-2. They are size 3 repeaters, laser repeaters, but they are quite different than normal size 3s. They have a higher rate of fire, so equipping 3 of these is better than 4 size 4s at this current moment. As for other specifications on this ship, you get four size 3 missile racks for the Santok Yai, all holding two Tempest 2 size 2 missiles on them to be able to be interchanged. You also get the options of one size 2 shield, two size 1 coolers, two size 1 power plants, one size 1 quantum drive, and an overall HP pool of 12,410. The ship also comes equipped with 20 different thrusters, allowing it to ignore a lot of the restraints in gravity on main planets, with most of the statistics for all the different directions that you can fly being mainly even across the board. A couple of the things that prevail a little bit more is the forward and backwards, the up and down, and the strafe is slightly, ever so slightly stronger on this ship. 
As far as the uh, ship axis rotation speeds though, the pitch and the yaw are very, very even, but the roll is significantly more powerful on this ship. So I really wanted to take this ship out and test it against some higher tier bounties and stuff in the game. But currently on the EPTU, I don't have anything unlocked. So I decided to go against some of these critical th threat beacons and the higher threat beacons and stuff like that. And I ended up getting into one with a couple good ships and uh, surprisingly a hammerhead was in here. And I found it surprising how well this ship handled against a hammerhead if i was you know in here with any other ship or anything like that a lot of the other ships that you know have not as many thrusters and not as much maneuverability in the game and without the high fire rate that this gun has it would have taken a lot longer not saying that the other ships wouldn't been able to do it but with the maneuverability of this ship the ability to aim and control your ship a little bit better and with the the fire rate that these size threes give i was able to burst this thing down significantly pretty quickly and you know using this this ship so far has been an experience it has been a different type of feel to ships that i've played in the game a lot of the uh alien ships like the santaki and the talon and stuff like that they maneuver exponentially well but that maneuverability is so high especially even on me or with me on my joysticks that th those ships are smaller ships they they spin very quick they roll very quick they turn very quick and it's a little bit jumpy whenever it comes to the gameplay that you're used to playing with normal ships and atmosphere and stuff like that it's hard to get used to controlling those ships because every little nudge that you do makes it turn so quickly that it's a little jarring but with this ship with it being a little bit of a higher you know armored more larger battleship in this game a, a bigger fighter the control of it is still very high but it feels a lot smoother because because it's just not zipping around as quickly, which gave me the opportunity to be able to aim at specific points on the ship and continue to hammer that specific point in order to take out the hammerhead itself. And with that being said, it made an enjoyable experience, but I did find out one little flaw. I don't know if it was just my ship, if I needed to recall it, or if it was something that was going on in the game currently, but I was unable to get missiles to work. But that being said, I mean, I'm sure that they're going to work eventually. This is the EP to you after all, and it is what it is. But this has been my thoughts on the ship. I think it is a wonderful ship and it has a bright future. If you guys enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Drop a like, drop a sub, all that good stuff and support us in the future as we go on make sure you guys don't miss out on any of the past videos that i've made and all the future videos coming out but with that being said i'm out keep it nerdy out there guys